Hello, welcome to another video, and as you can tell from the title, the thumbnail, the time of month, it is time for November's TBR Pursuit, yay! If you are unfamiliar with TBR Pursuit, it is the TBR board game that I play every month to determine my TBR. It's based off Trivial Pursuit, each colour correlates to a genre. There is a stack of question cards which all have bookish prompts on them and as always if you want to familiarise yourself with the game I will leave the playlist down below for you if you want to know more but basically there's a pie we're gonna fill it up with the books that I'm gonna read um, I'm gonna put this down because I don't need to hold it up the entire time so November November is the month of Believathon, so I am going to be trying to get as many middle grades into this as possible. If you are not familiar with what Believathon is, it is a middle grade readathon hosted by Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin, one of my nearest and dearest friends, one of the best readathons going, all focused around middle grade, and this time it's Believathon three and it's all very mysterious and you have to go around the manor house to collect the clues and to collect the clues you fulfil the reading prompts. It's brilliant, Gavin's genius. I'm excited about this. However, I do need to get it into TB Pursuit, so we'll be going for as many greens as possible, for one. Um, for two, punishment. <laughs> I didn't finish two, three, mm, at this point there are many I haven't finished. <laughs> um, however, I do think I will finish out a couple of them before the end of the month, so that's fine, um, which I think means there's going to be two books that I will not have finished, but will have started... No, there's one I definitely won't even have started. Okay, yeah. I failed, basically. So if Punishment Roll comes up, punishments will have to be taken, because I didn't finish the TBR, so we'll go with that. Um, punishments are the little pie symbol on the dice, because it's a six-sided dice but it doesn't go up to number six, it has a pie instead, which when you're playing Trivial Pursuit is a good thing. When you're playing TBR Pursuit, less so. <laughs> so, punishments are on the cards. But yeah, I don't think there's too much more for me to say. Of course, I want to get book club picks in there. Um, I want to get the middle grade monthly pick and Believathon picks in general in there. Um, but otherwise, I think there's not much else to say other than to just get on with the rolls. Um, I have Molly from Mind of Molly on reserve for an orange, so you may be seeing Molly's face. But I think the best thing for us to do is crack on with it. So, bring on roll number one. <laughs> All right, let's kick this off with roll number one. Two. And I'm kicking it off with a middle grade because believe a thon. And can you name a new to you author? I like this. Good start. So a little green pie in there. So absolutely no surprise to anyone. Rule number one, I went for a green because you can go anywhere at that point. And the prompt I got is can you name a new to you author? And yes, yes I can. And that's actually also a Believathon prompt, so that works very well. But I am going to read The Creature Keeper by Damaris Young. Damaris Young? This came in the Tales by Mailbox and it sounds really cute. It's about a young girl who becomes a creature keeper, caring for magical animals, uh, but it's a strange place and someone will do whatever it takes to keep the animals hidden. So mysterious, Magical creatures. Sounds like fun. It's called The Creature Keeper. It just sounds like fun in general. And someone pointed out when I opened it that the girl on the cover looks a little bit like me when I had my little black headband in. As you can tell, I have done nothing with my hair today. But yeah, I'm excited about this one. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. And I have not read anything from Damaris Young before, so a new to me author indeed. Roll number two. Let's go. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Orange! I have Molly on reserve for an orange, and I never get an orange this early, but one, two, three. Let's see what Molly has to do for me. Can you name a comic stroke graphic novel? Ooh, interesting. Molly, can you do me a solid there? <laughs> and the little orange pie in there. 
And roll number two, we get straight into the orange. Molly, where are ya? And Molly needs to name a comic or graphic novel. Molly has no idea what her prompt is, so let's give her a call and hope she's available. <laughs> she might be busy. <laughs> she's not busy, she did answer. Hello. Hi. Hello. I was literally on FaceTime to Zoe and I was like, I've got to go to Jace filming. She's like, you're just pushing me up. I was like, I'm not, I'm not a Jace filming. <laughs> I need to offer. Bye. <laughs> you need to be here. <laughs> you are being screen recorded, just so you're aware, you know the deal. Say hello to the people. Hello to the people, to Jade's peeps. My peeps. Right, so, rolled an orange, obviously. <laughs> Are you ready for your prompt? She has no idea what this is. I did tell her I could tell her in advance. She didn't want to know. Courageous. Right. <laughs> the million dollar question. Can you name a comic or a graphic novel for me? Ooh. What ones have you got unread? Unread. I have The Invisible Kingdom unread. I have... Mm, I Sola Volume 2 unread. Oh, I have The Magic Order. Rat Queens Volume 2. Monstrous Volume 2. Uh, low Volume 1. I think that's everything I have unread. Are any of them middle grade? <laughs> no. 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 So, Trying so to get those Believathon picks in there. No. Oh, sorry. Um, you like Rat Queens, don't you? I did like Volume 1 of Rat Queens, yes. Okay, I'll pick Volume 2 and then you confirm whether you like it or not. Volume 2 of Rat Queens. Ta-da! This is Volume 2, right? Yes, the far-reaching tentacles of whatever the fuck that says. Awesome! Awesome. Thank you. You haven't read these yourself, have you? No, I haven't. No? Okay. Totally random pick, just because I want to read it then. Isn't she a good egg? <laughs> I'm so nice. You are. All right, thank you very much. I will let you go and call Zoe back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will chat to you later on. Yes, I love you. I love you. Yeah. Bye! Isn't she a good egg? So, comic or graphic novel, Rat Queens, Volume 2. I read Volume 1 a long time ago, then I reread it in like April and still never got around to reading Volume 2, despite the fact that I do like Volume 1. So here's my opportunity to read Volume 2. This is about a kick-ass crew of like battle maidens. Um, they kick butt, they drink a lot, they get themselves in trouble, they are a mess, but it's good fun and there's clearly some sort of tentacled creature in this one so that's exciting thank you very much molly for that although with that prompt comic or graphic novel it was going to end up being a good one for me <laughs> roll number three is two one two one two roll again or roll again uh let's roll again <laughs> please don't be a punishment four one two three four one two three four i don't have a choice but to roll again come on no! Well, I mean, we knew it was gonna happen. It was bound to happen. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, roll number three. We knew it was gonna happen. The punishment was gonna come up, whatever. But one of the books that I didn't get to last month that I really need to because part of the book club for it, I missed out on the last live show, can't miss out on the next one, and that is gonna be Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I am like nearly done with Ship of Magic and I have really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to get to this one. So if I have to have a punishment roll, then it's gonna be one that I need to read in November anyway, so we'll take it, we'll have it. Second book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb, which is the 
fifth book in the Realm of the Elderling expansive series about ships that come to life and about the Vestrat family and their ship Vivacia and there are pirates and there are slavers and there are families and all sorts of stuff going on but I haven't finished the first book and I don't know the ins and outs of everything just yet but I like where it's going and I look forward to reading more of it. Right, roll number four that is for pie number three. Come on. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Adult fantasy or YA fantasy? Let's go for a YA fantasy. One, two, three. So pink is YA fantasy. And we have... Can you give an author a second chance? Hmm. I'm not sure. Can I? I'll try. And a pink pie in there. Roll number four. We've gone for a YA fantasy, which... Mm. But the prompt we have is, can you give an author a second chance? And I really had to think about this and what I was in the mood to read from an author that I've only read one thing of before and was kind of eh about. So what I have decided to pick here is Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I have only read Daughter of the Pirate King. I remember liking it but in the way that I like, in the way that I think other people like contemporaries. Like it being fluffy, very non-committal, just a bit, a bit of light reading. And I don't remember a lot of it. And I'm not necessarily fussed by it or the author. It is only a duology and I have the second one. So I guess this is the opportunity to see if Trisha Levenseller is an author that I could really like or will I just feel very indifferent about this is a way for me to tell. So yeah, this is the second book in the Daughter of the Pirate King duology, Daughter of the Siren Queen, about Alosa, yes, and Raiden? Right, It is Raiden. I was imagining it with a Y, but Alosa and Raiden. She is the daughter of the Pirate King, obviously. She thinks that she's all kick-ass and ends up being captured by a crew of men, I think, and then it turns into a love story, but I think that she wants to like take over the pirate isles from her father or something. There's a villainous Vorden exposing a secret that her father has kept for years. Deadly race with the feared pirate king. I can't remember a lot from the first one, so this is gonna be interesting, but we're giving Trisha Lavenseller that. Second opportunity. <laughs> Roll number five for pie number four. Not doing too good with the middle grades so far. <laughs> three. One, two, three. Perfect. One, two, three. Middle grade. <laughs> and we have, can you find a title with three or less words? That sounds doable. <laughs> so of course we have another green pie in there. Roll number five, we got ourselves a green and our prompt is, can you find a title with three or less words? And this works out very well for The Crooked Sixpence, which sounds a lot longer than three words, but The Crooked Sixpence is three words because sixpence is one word, not two. So we're reading the first book of The Uncommoners. This is the middle grade monthly pick for November, yeah. Um, I forgot what month we were talking about for a minute there. This I don't know too much about, but has been recommended to me a fair bit. It's by Jennifer Bell. I've read Wonderscape by her, which I did really enjoy, so excited to read more from her. I think this one is set in Victorian London. Ivy and Seb Sparrow stumble across something uncommon when they see a feather scratch an ominous message on their grandma's kitchen wall. Soon they are lost in the extraordinary world of Londonor, where ordinary objects have amazing powers. But where there is power, evil often lurks and Ivy and Seb must get to the bottom of a family secret before it's too late. So, sounds like an adventure, there's magic involved, I'm there. And so is the Middle Road Monthly Book Club. So if you want to join in with that, then get your mitts on a copy of The Uncommoners, The Crooked Sixpence by Jennifer Bell, illustrated by Carl James Mountford, who happens to be my favourite children's book illustrator. And I have really enjoyed everything I've read that's been illustrated by him. So I really hope I'm going to enjoy this as well. And I hope that you do too if you join in the uh, Middle Road Monthly Book Club. I'm excited to dive into this one. Roll number six. Six for pie number five. 
five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Loving this. Middle grades galore. And the card is... Can you name a book recommended by a friend? I like that. That's, that's nice. <laughs> and of course, a green pie in there. Doing better now. <laughs> Row number six, we got another green, which means another middle grade. And we have, can you name a book recommended by a friend? And this is perfect because I really want to read Frost Heart Escape to Aurora by Jamie Littler. Escape from Aurora, sorry, by Jamie Littler. And of course this has been raved about by Gavin, so I'm counting this as recommended by a friend because Gavin loves Frost Heart, Gavin loves Jamie Littler, and I'm excited about this. So Frost Heart follows a young boy called Ash who lives in a totally frozen world um, where out in the like sea of snow, the snow sea, there are leviathans who are these big monsters and he goes on an adventure on a sled to find other, other strongholds out in the snow on the ultimate journey to find his parents because he has lost his parents. There is a whole like family of characters in here that's just adorable, I love them all. Ash is a great main character. Tobu is a brilliant like father figure for an enormous scary yeti and it's, it's just, it's good fun. It's heartwarming, the first one was at least, I loved it. I can't wait to dive into the second one. I think Gavin's probably pretty excited for me to dive into the second one. And what an opportunity for Believathon to do it as well. And one of the prompts for Believathon is to read a book set in a dangerous setting. And you get double points if you read a book by Jamie Littler. So I'll, I'll be taking advantage of that. <laughs> and roll number seven to fill out our pie is... A three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's have a blue blank. One, two, three. And our prompt is, what happens if you randomise it? I don't think this one's come up before, but basically, random number generator. <laughs> this could go either way. And of course, a blue pie in there. And then finally, the last roll got a blue, and I mean, it could have been worse, it could have been better. Um, what happens if you randomise it? So blue blanks are genreless, and I just need to randomise my Goodreads TBR. So I have my laptop here. If it ends up on a book in a series, I will need to read a book from that series. Um, let's find how many books are on my um, to read shelf. 161. And I should fingers crossed, own all of those. So what I'm going to do is on my phone, I'm not going to screen record at this time, I'm going to pull up a random number generator and I'm going to put in between 1 and 161. And just see, I don't know if you can see that there. And I'm going to generate and I got 102. So what is the 102nd book on my Goodreads TBR? Ah! It is The Pearl in the Ice by Catherine Constable, um, which is actually a middle grade, but one that I wasn't necessarily excited about. Um, I have read Wolf Princess by Catherine Constable and I didn't love it, didn't hate it. Um, I don't know where this book is. Ah, found it. Bear with. Here it is. Here is the random number generator pick. It is a middle grade, as I say. Um, this is about a young girl who stows away on a ship with her father into the ice, but also a bit of a historical fiction with the war. Um, Twelve-year-old Marina feels an irresistible pull to the sea despite strict wishes of her father, a naval commander who's kept her away from the water all her life. When she's sent to boarding school, Marina instead stows away on her father's ship. Unbeknown to her, it's the eve of war and she's embarked on a stormy voyage through icy seas to where a great secret lies in wait. I get polar fantasy vibes from this because icy seas mainly and it's called the pearl in the ice and it looks very 
polary. I don't know if the fantasy element of that is very true at all. There was definitely fantasy in Catherine Constable's other book, The Wolf Princess, um, so I feel there might be some fantasy in here. She watched the whales alone as she stood on deck. She fancied she could send some part of herself down into the water and hear in the echoing cavern of the sea something astonishing. Maybe there will be a fantasy element, I don't know. Um, I feel like this would have been a good pick for Polathon, but no, we're gonna read it for Believathon instead. I'm sure this will fit a prompt somewhere, but yeah, there we go. That is the random number generated pick. That could have been a lot worse. I will take it. <laughs> I will take it. Not a new purchase, which would have been nice, but I will take it anyway. And there we have it. That is TBR Pursuit complete. Did get that punishment roll in there, but otherwise I think she's been sort of nice to me and I needed to read Madship anyway, so I'm not too mad about that. I will try my hardest to fit other Believathon reads within the month as well, just because it's Believathon. I love Believathon. I want to complete as much of it as I can, but I have to consider the way that my reading's been going recently. I cannot fully dedicate myself to it. I just can't, which breaks my heart, but I'm still gonna do absolutely as much as I possibly can because I love middle grade. I'm really in the mood to read a lot of middle grade lately and I love Believathon and I love Gavin, so. But yeah, let's stack these up just for a bit of fun to see the size of the month's TBR. It doesn't look too devastating. There we go. Doesn't look too devastating and that comic in there is great. Oh, also before I forget, something that I have not fit in here is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, which me and Becca are going to be buddy reading in November as well. So add that on the top there. And I mean, it's that little bit taller, but we'll manage this. We will be fine. And this Savage Song is a reread for me. What will it be? The third time? So should be absolutely fine. Very excited about it. Very excited about all of these, to be honest. So yeah, well, mm, yeah, well, we'll be fine. We'll manage. It's all good. Right. There's my November TBR. I hope you have enjoyed playing TBR Pursuit with me this month. But that brings us to a close. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Chat to me down below. As always, when it comes to TBR Pursuit, if you don't necessarily want to leave a big comment, you don't have much to say, just leave me a dice emoji. That's always fun. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.